So arithmetic progressions is the start of a little section on sequences and series. There are a number of formulae that you have to um, wrap your head around and be able to uh, use comfortably, um, but they are on your formula sheet. So you just need to practice being able to use them. And once you've got to use them heaps, then uh, you will actually just naturally memorise these and I would recommend that before the exam you, you sort of cram those ones so that you don't have to look them up all the time but they are there on your formula sheet if you need them. Right, so back to arithmetic progressions. So uh, this is a sequence where you have a constant difference between the terms. So for example, 2, 6, 10, 4, they go up in 4s in a fixed amount um, or this one where it's going um, down in 3s um, so the, the key here is that the difference between the terms is always constant and that's called an arithmetic progression. You may have talked about them as being linear sequences because the nth term would be a uh, linear expression. Um, that was back when you were doing this in IGCSE. Okay, so first of all some definitions. Uh, the first term we always call A and the difference we call D. So then our first term in a sequence would be A. The next term would be a plus D, so A plus the difference. The next one would be A plus 2D and so on. Until you get to the nth term which would be A plus N minus 1D. So you want to find the tenth term in a sequence you would do A plus 9 lots of the difference. So the first term plus 9 of those hops along. Okay so examples of how to use these. Example number one, we've got the fifth term of an AP is 27, the eighth term is 42, we're going to find the first term, common difference, and the nth term. So let's first of all start by writing down as a formula what we've been told. So the fifth term, that would be A plus 4 lots of the difference, and that equals 27. The eighth term gives us A plus 7D makes 42. So then by simultaneous equations, we can work out that 3D is 15, so D is 5. So we found the common difference. From there we can work out what A is. So A has to be 7. Again, just look, using those simultaneous equations. So that gives us the first term. And now the nth term, we can just write in our A and D values into our formula for the nth term. And that is 7 plus 5 N minus 1. Okay, the nth term of an AP is 4 plus 3n. We're going to find the first term and the common difference. So this time um, we're given what the nth term is. So first term is when n equals 1. So we just put that into our formula. So a would be 4 plus 3 times 1, which is 7. Now for the common difference, we just need to know the second term so that we can do the second term minus the first term and see what the difference is. So the second term is 4 plus 3 times 2, which is 10. So the difference is 3. All right, next section is the sum of an arithmetic progression. Now consider this um, sequence that we've got here, 2, 5, 8, 11, 14. And if you wanted to add up the first five terms of that sequence, you would talk about the sum of them being like this. Now we can also rewrite that backwards. It would just it would be the same thing if you added it up, it doesn't matter what order you add them in. But if we rewrite this backwards, you can see this interesting result. So if you added those together, each of those um, pairs add up to make 16. So if you did two lots of the sum of the first five numbers, you would get 16 added up five times. So then once you've done 2s, you can just half it to work out what one sum would be. So the sum of the first five terms would be 40. Okay, now think about this in general terms. If we talk about L being the last um, term in a sequence, then you can rewrite those terms like this. So S sub N, that just means that the sum of the first N terms, so that would be A plus the second term which is a plus d plus the third term which is a plus 2d so on until you've got uh, the last term um, and then the second to last term would be l minus one of the differences. Okay if we rewrite that backwards then it looks like this and then we go through that same process. If we add those two lines together then you get uh, two lots of the sum of the first n numbers so 
looking at each portion of, of that adding up, that first column we get A plus L. The second column, if you look at that, you've got A plus L plus L, sorry, A plus D plus L minus D. So the D's cancel out and you get A plus L. Same with the next one, the 2D and the minus 2D cancels out, so you get A plus L, and you can see where this is going, you get A plus L every time, which means you get N lots of A plus L. That would give you twice the sum. So if you want to work out what the sum is on its own, you would then divide that by 2. And here is our first formula for the sum of the first N terms. Now, if you don't know what the last term is, you can use the formula for working out the last term. So the last term would be a plus n minus 1d. You saw that on the, the first slide there um, for the, the nth term. So then if we tidy that up a little bit, you've got 2a plus n minus 1d, and we can have our formula like this as well. So there's two versions of that formula for the sum of the first n terms. doesn't matter which one you use, you pick whichever one is relevant to the information that you're given. Um, obviously you can see the a plus l1 is a little bit easier, so if you can work out the last term, that's the way to go. Okay, so examples of using this. We want to find the sum of the first 15 terms of this arithmetic progression. So a is 4, the difference is 5, it's going up in 5s, and we want to work out the sum of the first 15 terms, so the last term will be 4 plus 14 times 5, just using our nth term um, there. So that will be 74. So the sum of the first 15 terms, we're going to use this formula, and we replace n with 15, a is 4, l is 74, so we get 585.